What's up guys, today we have the brown belt beast back on the channel. I call him that because he's insanely strong and athletic and has some serious BJJ skills. I didn't feel like wrestling that day, but if you want to see more stand up, just let me know and I'll accommodate. My number one attack in Nogi when my opponent has the underhook is the front headlock. So I off balance Alex to the side, causing him to post, which opens up the space between his shoulder and neck, so I snatch up his neck with my guillotine grip. As Alex fights the hands for the guillotine, it takes away his post and I'm able to finish the butterfly sweep and take top position. Alex's fight to establish a guard causes me to post, which is fine because I transition to the Dars, which requires the other arm underneath the neck. It's actually pretty simple to prevent a Dars, you need to either get to your knees or put your back flat on the mat, which is what Alex is doing. This makes it very difficult to lock up because the mat is in the way. Although I could have rolled over my shoulder and tried to finish the Dars from bottom position, which would be a good counter to Alex's counter. Against someone as strong and explosive as Alex, you need to always be ready to transition transition. When people get to their side, it naturally creates back exposure. I wasn't fast enough this time, but you'll see the same back entry successfully executed later in the video. There's a lot of options from the three quarter mount, including the knee slide to the other side. This is an unconventional knee slide because I'm using my other knee to slide. To prevent the pass, Alex should have held tighter to my ankle and tried to take an underhook. Alex does a great job of not letting me settle here, not letting me grab his head. He turns away to turtle, but I get my seatbelt grip before he can. He tries to hide his back back on the mat and I'm trying to keep back exposure by keeping his head elevated. Where the head goes, the body must follow. Alex wins the battle and now tries to regard by turning into me, but I'm all over him by riding him with my shin. This encourages Alex to turn away again, but I'm ready with that chair sit back take you often see in my videos. I try to armbar him instead of take the back. I grab his leg because my left leg isn't over his face and you need one of the two to stop him from turning into you. I'm unsuccessful, but I'm back in the three quarter mount, so let's try a rolling back attack. Instead of going all the way through to the back, I go halfway and stop in the truck position and start attacking the calf slicer. I roll over my shoulder as close to the hips as possible so I can rely on angle rather than momentum and I grab his ankle before he can extend it. For calf slicers and knee bars, the foot in the crook of your elbow is way better than grabbing it with two hands. Now I just pull down as I extend my shin into Alex's knee and calf. My goal is to teach you how to grapple, not just specific jujitsu techniques. So if that's what you're looking for, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Where Alex really shines is top position. This guy is so hard to off balance, it's incredible. That's why I try to put him on his back as much as I can. Alex wins the grip fight and as a result enters my guard on his terms, except I sneak in my knee shield. The knee shield prevents Alex from really putting his weight on me. I transition now to the half guard butterfly to try to elevate Alex and get my hips underneath him, but he stays too heavy. If I could pull his right arm towards me, I could likely get that butterfly sweep. That's why he's keeping it away from me. But now he wins the grip fight by circling his hands inwards and controlling my wrist. That's a tight grip and I try to see if I can triangle him so I don't have to break the grip or maybe it'll cause him to let go but no luck. Using the knee shield I'm able to make some distance and strip his grip off me. This is nice work from Alex putting me into the side smash and then collapsing my elbow by pulling it from underneath me. To make sure he can't smash me, I bring my knee to the outside and now I just need to make sure that Alex can't grab my head. I say it in absolutely every video, you can never let someone grab your head, it'll make such a difference in your game if you prioritize this. I try to get underneath Alex when he lifts his leg, but he recognizes the threat and stays heavy. He does this by keeping his butt to his heels. If his butt was higher, I probably could have got the job done. You need to always be aware of where you're keeping your weight. If you do, you'll get swept a lot less. The only thing stopping you from taking someone's back is their arm. I get Alex's arm off of me and onto the mat by forcing his weight forward. But before I can get onto his back, he overhooks my underhook. That's what stops me from taking his back, his arm. Because Alex's knee is off the mat, it makes more sense to grab his leg rather than keep the underhook because his leg is closer and it won't be overextended. I should have controlled Alex's left arm better or transitioned to something else because now things are getting a little rocky for me. This is good because now you get to see Dars prevention by getting to your knees. This will make it harder but not impossible for Alex to lock it up but way harder to finish as he doesn't have the same finishing angle he would as if I were on my side. I use a wrestling sit out to escape by shucking my elbow forward which makes room for my head to pop out and now I go towards the legs to wrestle Alex making sure he can't put his feet on the ground. I know if I do this there's no way he can stand up and I want to put him and keep him on the bottom. I don't want Alex to get underneath me so I sit to my knee but this makes my left leg light and now he can attack it by pulling my leg out of there while also making sure to clear his guard at the same time. Alex is doing exactly what I tell you guys to do. He's making sure that I can't grab his head and he's using his frames to stop me from coming up higher. I'm stuck controlling the hips. It's important to remember that most escapes involve your opponent 
opponent getting onto their side. Knowing this, you need to be ready and have options to attack when they do. In this case, I go for a rolling back attack, but I can't get Alex's hips across my body enough to take the back, so I'm kind of stuck in this halfway between the truck and the back. I could work the twister, but I feel like that's not going to happen. I need to get my left knee on Alex's left side to take the back. It doesn't happen, but at least I have Alex completely controlled. He can't turn to his left because I have my leg intertwined with his, and he can't turn to his right because of the grip I have on his left arm. Every control position in Jiu Jitsu features this concept. You need something stopping your opponent from turning either direction always. As you become more advanced, you can set traps that encourage them to go specific ways with an attack waiting. Alex tries to sweep me using his elbow, and if I were to stay on my knees, he probably would have got me, but I prop up to my feet to counter. This puts me at risk of a leg lock as Alex tries to shoot his hips underneath me, but I control his legs and back steps so he can't entangle me with his legs. Controlling the legs from top position is absolutely essential, because your guard is your legs. Your guard is just grips you take with your legs. We must always control these grips. Here I try to roll into the front headlock position, but as I roll I try to turn it into more of a rolling back attack. Alex counters by hiding his back on the mat. It's such a simple thing you can do to stop your back from being taken. Now I'm just being patient, making sure to keep back exposure, and when I get grips, find my opportunity opportunity for the chair sit back take by bringing my knee towards the head and rolling over my tucked shin. I'm just going to fast forward this part just because not a lot happens. I'm just trying to attack from the back, but while we're here, I'd like to ask you, who's your favorite BJJ athlete to watch? For me, it's Marcelo Garcia. Though he's retired, I've always loved his game and the way he carries himself. He seems like a really nice guy. Watch how I use my butterfly hook to elevate Alex's leg. Remember, if he can't put his feet on the mat, then he can't get up on top. This is a really nice bump and shrimp from Alex. Watch how he gets completely onto his side. This ensures that there's minimal surface area on him that I have my weight. This this is cool too, watch how Alex pulls my head past my knees and then kicks out my leg to bring my head out even further. When the head is past the knees, the guillotine is a great choice. Rather than hoping I make a mistake and bring my head past my knees myself, Alex forces it to happen. Here I backstep to pass and look how disciplined Alex is at using his T-Rex arms. He keeps me down by the hips where attacks are minimal and control isn't ideal. I always have options though, here I step over for this low mount. I'm just focused on trying to keep my hips down and keep Alex's knees from bending. Alex is doing the right thing by using his frames to prevent me from coming up higher where there's actual submission threats available. He wants to keep me below his knees because once I go above, that's when I can actually take a real mount. I'm unable to keep him on his back though, that's what you should focus on when you mount someone, keep them on their back because most escapes require your opponent to get onto their side and if they do get onto their side, you need to be ready to transition like I did to side control here. I know we're running out of time, so I go for a Hail Mary leg lock attempt working to get above the knee line. Alex accidentally helps me out by turning away from me. His knee actually goes deeper and where I need it to be, but we run out of time anyways. All right, this is something new that we're gonna try where I'm gonna break down the technique after the fact so you can actually kind of see it uh, in more detail and um, you can learn it better. So first we'll start off with um, that Darce roll I was talking about. So. And when people put their backs on the mat, it's hard to lock up and it kind of strips your grip. Um, so what we can do to counter that is you can roll through and finish the darts where you're kind of, uh, where your, your belly is facing up. So we'll go over that now. So look, you know, when I have someone in darts, or when you, when you have someone in darts, they want to put their back on the mat. Look how it like strips my grip like that, right? And it makes it so much harder to finish too. Like it's hard to get the angle because I need to lift my elbow up to get the angle. So if he starts bringing bring his back to the mat, my, I lose my elbow positioning, okay? And make sure to watch my darts video to um, learn about elbow positioning in more detail. So look, I'm here. I got the darts. Mike's trying hard to put his back on the mat. I can just roll through like this. And now I'm here. Now I gotta make sure Mike can't get on his knees because you can also defend the darts by getting onto your knees. So I keep him here like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust my elbow, bring it down, and I'm gonna walk forward like this. And now when I walk forward, it, it, press, it pushes his, um, his head into my wrist and his neck into my wrist. So I drop my elbow, I walk forward, and that's it, okay? If, if, if I can reach his feet, if I can reach his legs, that's good too. But you don't always need to, to grab the legs. Like oftentimes you're defined just like that. So come out here. So yeah, that's the that's a great way to counter when someone's trying to put their back on the mat. That's what you should do when someone's trying to dart. So you try to put your back on the mat. Alternatively, you get to your knees, where it's a lot easier to you know fight the grips and um, and do other escapes. So 
like the escape I did on Alex where I did that wrestling sit through. So we'll go over that. I need to make space by shucking my elbow up like this, shoot, shooting my leg out. At the same time, grabbing the leg. I don't want to turn um, towards Mike that way. I want to turn, turn towards the leg so I can wrestle him. Yeah, I think that's a really good, um, really good escape for Darcy's. I haven't, I've been having really a lot of success with that. So yeah, next up we have um, the knee slide I did from three quarter mount, which um, where I went to the other side. So, so my leg was stuck here and this is like, this is three quarter mount for the person on top or quarter guard for the person on the bottom. Just kind of whichever way you think of it. So traditionally, you know, you knee slide this way, right? What I did was I brought my knee, this was topping through, and I knee, I, I knee slided this way in the side control. So just a technique oftentimes people um, kind of forget about, and it's pretty cool. So yeah, I did that from um, three quarter mount. I also did uh, a rolling back tack. So Mike had me here, or sorry, Alex had me here. And now look, I walk my hands back, walk them back, I hook my toes on his shin wherever I can grab. And I want, really want to like have my shoulder drop right here. And now I'm here, I got the leg, I can start going to cast slice it. So I think it's way better to loop the leg through your arm like this, okay? And then now press down rather than holding with your with your hands because he's just too far away from me here where when it's here, it's a lot closer to my chest. And to make it even worse, once you're here, you can put your foot like this and press and press your, uh, and then push with your foot and pull at the same time and it's just super nasty. Another advantage of that is that if I'm here and Mike's pulling down on my leg, it's probably not gonna submit me, but it's gonna hurt and I don't want that. So, if, but if it was here to begin with and I had it here, well, I don't gotta worry about that and I got a super nasty cast slicer for him. So, yeah, that's pretty, a pretty cool technique. So, another place I went for the, and first off, yeah, you can do rolling backpacks into the truck. So that's what that position is, the truck. And, uh, or you can do rolling backpacks all the way to the, all the way to, uh, to, to the back, okay? So another, another rolling backpack I did on Alex was uh, from side control. So, so I didn't have his head. I was kind of more like here. And I pulled Alex's legs towards me here and I hooked with my heel. And as I came up, I switched from heel to my toes and then I rolled through, same thing. I cut, like I, I grabbed his, his arm to try to twister him, but he also came up at the same time. So it was really hard to uh, twister him or do anything. So I wanted to shoot my left knee through to take his back, but he's so heavy, I was having a hard time. But that's what I want to do. I want to shoot my knee through, boom, and take it back. So yeah, that's a really cool technique. And um, I have a whole video on rolling pack tax that really show it in pretty good detail. So make sure to watch that. And the last kind of thing I want to break down was the, the, I did like a, a rolling like front headlock guillotine, uh, which kind of turned into a rolling back tack. But I'll show you just how to do the, the rolling guillotine or front headlock. So Alex was kind of going butt, Mike. So Alex was kind of in this like sit up guard here. He was coming, he was coming up into sit up guard. And then as I saw that, I, I, I hooked underneath his chin and I rolled through. This is where I wanted to be because now I got anacondas available or if he turns to his knees, I got guillotines, exactly. More about my cars. I've got all sorts of cool stuff, but yeah, you can come up, Mike. But uh, yeah, Alex, like he, uh, he did a good job countering. I had to just go for the wrong back tack, but I didn't get the wrong back tack, but it was fine. But yeah, um, so thanks for sticking around at the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a comment or fist bump. And um, if you guys like this, like breakdown at the end, make sure to let me know, I'll keep doing it. And uh, yeah, thank you to all my patrons. We have almost 100 patrons now, which like blows my mind. Without their support and generosity, it'd be a lot harder to, uh, to get this channel going. So I really appreciate you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.